Congratulations, Gabby. You made it to the final round of Who Wants to Become Catholic? How do you feel? Uh, transcendent. <laughs> We've got just one last question, and this one should be an easy one. Gabby, do you want to follow Christ? Yes! That's great! Bob, let's show her what she's won! Well, Nick, our Gabby has just won a life of mockery. It comes with an unlimited supply of insults and falsehoods. Wow. Huh? Jesus called this one the blessed package. VIPs only. Congratulations! Welcome to Catholic Central, I'm Gabby. And I'm Nick. Today we're talking about the Beatitudes. AKA, how you too can become blessed. Have you ever had one of those days? Or months. Or years. Everyone goes through hard times. 2002. Yes, but sometimes those trials can also lead to spiritual growth. Today we'll talk about how Jesus invites us to a life of real blessings, even as one might struggle with difficult things. And that he is with us even when no one else is. And I mean, no one. The Beatitudes come from the Latin Beatudo. Although, if they were pronounced Beatitudes, it would be a pretty solid name for a punk Beatles cover band. But they're not, so instead they just mean blessed. Because literally every one of them starts with the word blessed. Hang on, these two passages don't line up. Checkmate Christians, proof your religion is wrong. Yes, you might have noticed that Luke is shorter. This could be because it's possible that they are two different sermons from different moments in time. One has Jesus on a mount, the other on a plane. Depending on which gospel you're reading, we've got the poor. Or poor in spirit. The hungry. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Those who mourn. Or are weeping. The meek. Us, when people hate us or insult us. The merciful the clean of heart, the peacemakers, and those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness. But when Jesus says blessed, what does he mean? We show a little mercy and get a salary raise and a new car? No. We can think of beatitude as being in a state of blessedness and union with God. Up until the time of Jesus, the chosen people were operating according to the Torah, which is the Ten Commandments and the laws given in the first five books of the Bible. Which are fine as far as rules and commandments go. Those got their society pretty far. They conquered foreign enemies and established a territory to live and worship. But the Beatitudes reflect a new focus. They're less about earthly territory and more about the kingdom of heaven. And while the commandments which God revealed to Moses are similar to themes found in the New Testament, the emphasis here is on a refined sense of humility and love. The Beatitudes aren't just talking about behaviors, but states of being. And they contradict our basic instincts. On a fundamental level, we all want happiness. The Beatitudes acknowledge that need, but also tell us that our greater goal is what we were made for, union with God. And sometimes, the exact thing that makes us miserable is bringing us closer to Him. They remind us that God is always with us. And challenge us to make moral choices. As Pope Francis says, they call us to confront the troubles and anxieties of our age with the spirit and love of Jesus. And Jesus says, blessed are the merciful. He calls us to extend mercy, just as God has shown us mercy. And the clean of heart? Challenges us to cleanse ourselves of anything that blocks us from seeing and experiencing God. The hunger and thirst for righteousness? Calls us to pursue earthly justice on both a local and global level. And the peacemakers? Calls us to strive to make peace in our own lives and bring others together to heal grudges. But what if I really just don't want to do any of this? Uh, what? Well, I, I mean, I mean <laughs> it is fairly satisfying to start fights. I mean, you might even say I live for the drama. Well, let's read on in Luke then, who includes four woes. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. But woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. Okay, I have to stop fighting with people and stop laughing? Come on! Okay, calm down. Jesus isn't telling us to frown all the time or feel bad when people compliment us. Um, nice hair, by the way. 
I feel conflicted. Well, take the compliment. What Jesus is actually saying is that we shouldn't make idols of riches, fame, or power. Because ultimately, those aren't the things that will make us happy. <sighs> okay. Thanks. I spent three hours this morning getting my hair ready. And it looks great. So, let's recap. The Beatitudes give us a road map for our ultimate happiness. Doing the thing we were designed to do. Being united with God and at peace with our neighbors. Since God loves us freely, without us doing anything to deserve it, we should try to love others in the same way. Without them having to earn it. Even though it's kind of nice when they try. <laughs> of course, this doesn't mean we shouldn't draw boundaries. Or that we should be in abusive relationships. But that we should take care not to let ourselves get corrupted by desires for earthly things. Or overrun by resentment, anger, or hatred even if we're talking about 2002. It's gonna be okay. For Catholic Central, I'm Nick. Until next time, stay blessed.